Green Doctor's nephew, so this is a special visit. And today the Green Doctor asked me, how would I turn this block of wood into a bowl? Basically, what I said I would do would be, I would cut it into a bowlish shape with a saw, then I burn out the inside, then smother it with dirt, like the um, Native Americans. After I did that, I would wash it, sand it, wash it again, sand the outside, wash the outside, and then I'd sand like the top bit, and I'd wash the out, and I'd wash the top bit. Then with the wood that was left, I would glue some of it together and um, I would also cut it into a lid. And I do pretty much the same process except with the, without the burning and smothering with dirt. And that's pretty much what I do. Okay, bye. I started with a bit of shop organization. Since my bandsaw outfeed table, like most horizontal surfaces in my shop, had collected quite a bit of junk, I set out to clean that up. Fortunately for this project, a week or so before James came up with the idea, I had milled up a cherry log with my Alaskan mill. I drew a rough circle and drilled a hole in the center. Using a simple jig made of some scrap plywood and a dowel, I cut out the blank. I then mounted it on the lathe and rough turned the outside. It was around this point that I realized I was not alone in the shop. An important point to know is that wood moves. This was perfectly round when I rough turned it about six months ago. It was allowed to dry slowly so it hasn't cracked. This blank is green and has already started to crack. Given the rapid stresses we're going to put it through, it's not a question of if it will crack, just how much. Having no idea what I was doing, I started with just some fat wood and bark, with a crude shield made of 1 8 inch aluminum stock. Notice the wood sweating as it heats up. After the initial burn of several hours, progress was slow, so I needed to come up with a faster and more controllable method. To this end, I made a furnace of sorts, using a steel can and a cardboard tube as a mold. I filled the mold with mortar, both to insulate and provide mass. This proved to be very effective in generating the bed of coals I was going for, while still preserving the walls of the bowl. Even then, it took me five burns to get to the depth I wanted. I periodically moved the coals around to focus the burn on certain areas and protect others. I even managed to make some family time out of it. Cook the marshmallows. Make s'mores. Oh, 
All right, Hannah. In the end, I was very happy with the results, with only two large radial cracks on the edges. I started by filling the cracks with tinted epoxy. I wanted to preserve the char pattern while still ending up with a functional bowl. I chose the 207 West Systems hardener with the idea of creating a clear cast. I started with a seal coat that I brushed on. I had the idea to take advantage of centrifugal force. If this seems like a bad idea, it's only because it is. It really didn't work very well. I then figured I would fill the cavity with resin and then turn the excess away on the lathe, but as epoxy is far from cheap, I needed a way to take up some of the volume. Fortunately, I have a reliable source of ballast material. Emily? Emily? Is it alright if I borrow your rocks? Yes. All of them? How many of them? You can borrow two or six or nine more. That's all I have. That's all you can have. Okay, I'll give them back, okay? You can't have all of them. Warning, curing epoxy generates heat. When contained, a large mass of curing epoxy has a very short hot light and can generate enough heat to melt plastic and foam, burn your skin, and ignite combustible materials. That's never gonna happen. Oh no. When the epoxy overheated, it flash cured the sides, and after I poured out the remaining liquid portion, it ended up with a pretty interesting result that actually looked like ice. At this point, it went from being a functional piece to a purely art piece. I made a faceplate and screwed it to the waist portions of the rim. I used drywall screws, which is a no-no, but I did survive. I returned the outside to round. and then trued up the tenon as well. After removing the faceplate, I mounted it on the chuck. And then trued up the rim. I then removed a significant amount of thickness from the outside and filled more cracks from the drying process with tinted epoxy. I then defined the rim and finished with a scraper. I then spent a significant amount of time sanding to reach a final finish. After I did that, I would wash it.
again? The Daddy Lads are Tom! And then I'd say like the top bit. After all that, I applied a finish of shellac. Which, after only one coat, was looking pretty good. I buffed the epoxy, added more coats of shellac, and finished off with a dark paste wax. With the bowl 95% done, I was just left with removing the tenon. I made a self-centering chuck based on Peter Brown's video that sandwiches the bowl securely while still allowing access to the bottom. I managed to have a little fun with the dust collector. After adding some finish, I removed it from the chuck and the bowl was pretty much done. Seeing as it was now an art piece, I needed a way to display it. I started with the negative of the bowl blank and cut off the wings. I planed the bottom so it would sit flat and did the same on the back for joinery purposes. I then cut the upright support from one of the wing offcuts. The joinery was a fairly simple half lap. Cutting the mortise proved to be challenging as it was all end grain. I ultimately was able to do it using a Dremel multi-tool. I did a dry fit and then did the glue up with a couple of clamps. To ensure the bowl would sit securely, I transferred the profile onto the upright and then cut to the line. With that, the project was finally done.